Hi everyone and welcome to Paper Pumpkin Week here on Creative Chelsea. Over the next week I'm going to share with you eight card ideas that you can make with one set of supplies from the May 2024 Paper Pumpkin Kit called The Best There Is. The projects from this kit are so fun with wood textures, bold colors, and beautiful nature images. They are perfect for Father's Day or anyone who loves being outdoors. The kit creates a total of nine greeting cards, three in three different designs. If you would like to watch me unbox the kit and create these cards, click on the playlist in the top right corner. Today I'm sharing with you my first set of alternative cards. These two cards use the multicolored chevron piece from the kit in two different ways. Each month I take the contents from the paper pumpkin kits and make alternative projects. My cards are easy to follow and can be made by both experienced or new paper crafters. You may need just a couple other products to complete them. You can follow along with me using supplies you already have or purchase any of the products you see me use from my online store. The link to all products is below in the description or on my blog, creativechelsea.com. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get updates when I post a new video. To begin, we are going to start with some pieces from the kit. I have that multicolored chevron image. I have kind of the crumb cake card base and this misty moonlight wood grain card base. So let's start with the crumb cake card base. I'm going to go ahead and just trim it down to four inches and then five and a quarter inches and that's going to give me a nice border when we add it to our card base. So that's the size right there. We're also using that same piece right here for our greeting. So the width for that is one inch. So we're going to go ahead and rotate to the shorter side and cut off one inch. And then what we'll do is we'll stamp our greeting here and then trim down once we have the greeting on here. So just place that strip off to the side. Make sure to hold on to any of your scraps throughout the week that you're making because I always come back and use those up. And then with our Misty Moonlight card base, we're going to cut a piece that's two and a quarter inches. And it doesn't really matter which side you use. Let's just go ahead and use this left side. So two and a quarter. And then we're going to trim that. Let's just trim off the top to five inches. Okay, again, save all of the little scraps. You never know when I'm going to use those on a card. So there's that piece. That's going to be our background piece here for card number two. For our multicolor card, we're just gonna go ahead and cut this in half. So let's see, it's five inches. So half of that is two and a half. We're gonna use one piece for our card here. This is, I'm going to use the piece that has the little bit of this pool party um, plank in the corners. So that piece is going to go for card number one. So place that off to the side. And then this piece here, we're going to actually create a border piece with it. So I'm excited to share with you how I did that. So that's really fun. So hold on to that and put it off to the side here. For our first card, I'm going to use the Misty Moonlight ink spot that came in the kit, as well as Early Espresso and Crumb Cake, just to add a little more color to the card. Let's begin by laying the middle piece right in the center, and just kind of eyeball where, you know, so it has a nice even border all the way around. I'm going to take the crumb cake and we're going to create some photo corners using this little dotted 
like cloud image almost. Let me see if I can show you the image. So this is the image right here that I used or I am using. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and use crumb cake. And in those corners, I think this moved a little bit. In those corners, we're gonna just place a little bit of that detail in the top left and bottom right corners. So you're just gonna stamp around the multicolor. So you're not stamping on it, you're just stamping around it. So you're gonna get something that looks like this, okay? So crumb cake is done. Let's go ahead and go to our trees. So in the kit, there is this hexagon label shape. We're gonna go ahead and stamp the trees on this label in misty moonlight. So place that as far up to the top as you can. Just like that. So that top tree is not over the edge, but just close to the the um, little detail. What is that? It's like a stitching detail. Okay. So you may have noticed that this is longer. So I'm going to give you a little trick on to how to do that. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do our greeting in early espresso. And I'm using You're the Best There Is. You can use any greeting. So you know what? I think we should probably cut this differently. So sorry about that. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut that off and we'll, you can use that for something else. But we're going to do two and one eighth. Yeah. So on this strip, we're gonna go ahead and cut this down to two and one eighth inches. And then we're going to stamp our greeting on here because we do need it to be wider than our trees. I forgot about that. So just center that in your strip. And then grab your paper trimmer again. We're just gonna clean up a little bit of that ink so it doesn't get all over our projects. Grab your paper trimmer again and we're going to trim off the bottom here. And we're gonna trim it at about two inches. So the two inch mark is touching the tip of my label. Okay, so this is how we're going to elongate this hexagon and make it taller. So once we have that there, you can use a little liquid glue or if you like, you can use tear and tape. I'm just gonna put a little liquid glue right at the bottom of each edge, or not the bottom, but just along each edge. So you can see a little touch of glue there and the same for that. Okay, and once that's in place, you're going to add your greeting on top, and you just wanna make sure that everything kind of stays straight. So we're gonna see a little bit of the tree trunks underneath, the same here. And you wanna just make sure that your lines line up with the bottom so that it feels like it's one piece. So what I'm doing is lining up the bottom edge with the top edge on my grid, just like that. Let's make sure it fits. We need it to make sure it stays within this shape here, and it looks like it does, so that's nice. So make sure that glue really adheres to the edge. And then we have a nice long piece here. 
let's go ahead and add some embellishments. So I wanted to use linen thread and I've actually used the linen thread on all of my projects. So hopefully you have some either linen thread or a crumb cake twine, just something that you can place on your projects to make it um, just a little extra to add to those. And I have a piece here that's longer than the other just because it's going behind that larger element. So you need a piece that's a little bit bigger. So it is 10 plus six. So 16 inches is what I have. And it's really curly and I like a little looser. So I'm gonna run it through my fingers to straighten out that curl because I like it to be straight. So you can see how that really straightens it up. On the back here, we can add some either tear and tape or glue dots. And this is where we will place our faux bow. So right here in the middle of the greeting, and I want it to go up on the B, so it's gonna go up this way. So once you've got your adhesive there, you're gonna find the center of that 16 inches of twine and angle it just slightly. Put the center on that glue dot and then you can kind of go back and forth. You're gonna wrap it to create a faux bow along the back. And you can put some more glue dots on there if you need more adhesive to hold things in place. Just like that. Okay, let's make it just a little smaller. It feels a little floppy because it doesn't have much structure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull on the end a little bit to make the loops just a little smaller. Just like that. Okay, so we're gonna get something that looks like this and then we can add it to our multicolor background with dimensionals. And just make sure that it's not sticking behind your element and then place that right in the center. So for this one, it looks like my angles are going a little differently, but it doesn't really matter which way to place those angles. There we go. And then I also popped this up. So this has a double layer. And then you'll just wanna place that right inside of those photo corners that you created. And try to make sure it's nice and straight. And then once you have that done, you can place it on a card base. And I'm using a card base of thick basic white cardstock. And I'm just going to add it with some liquid glue. And that goes right in the center. There'll be a little border all the way around. So just kind of try to keep that nice and even. And once it's on, you can use a bone folder on the back to smooth it out. And let's just bring that down a little bit. You can, you can also trim a little bit of those um, ends too if you want. But your card is all done. Super cute. Quick and easy, fun technique on how to elongate that hexagon and a little bit of fun detail in the corners. All right, so let's move on to card number two. So for card number two, we're gonna begin by separating this piece into two by following along the joining area. So let me see if I can help um, have that make sense. So you gotta look at your left and right sides and so this right side goes up and stops underneath. So we're gonna do the same here for this white one. So we're gonna make a slit right here along that edge where the white panel or white um, plank hits the other white plank. And then we're gonna rotate 
and go across the top of that white plank and then go across the top of this gray plank and then the blue one just like that okay so you may have um, just some areas where you have to overcut just slightly and that's okay this is just kind of a background element so um, just do your best try not to tear it use a thin pair of scissors like these paper snips are really good for this and you're just going to keep going back and forth to separate the two sides I love how this gives a fun border to your card okay I'm not gonna go that way I'm gonna come from it from the top okay all right so now we have two pieces and we're going to angle them together. Okay, so just take take the one piece, I think it was like this, and flip it around so that the straight edges are lined up and you can see that the colors will also line up into another chevron. And we are going to adhere these together on the back. So you can take any type of tape. Uh, you could use washi tape but I'm going to use just a little bit of clear tape um, I know that this is going to hold it really well. So I've got some clear tape and I'm going to add it so that the edge sits. So it's at the top edge here. Okay, so I'm adding it just there. So it's really important you do this from the front so that your colors can line up. So get your planks line up right here just like that and then lay it down you can see I still have some adhesive that's showing so I'm just going to kind of pull that back and cut that off so I don't want that adhesive on there okay all right so now that's connected you may also notice that we've got a, a little bit of discrepancy here so this bottom side is wider than the top side. And it is the same actually on my card as well, but you just don't see it because we kind of cover it up. So we're gonna leave this the way it is. Here on the left side, you'll see that we've got a little bit of overlap. So we are going to trim that down. So grab your paper trimmer and bring that in. And you're just going to take and trim it. And you can either trim a little bit off both, so it's nice and even all the way, or you can try to just trim off the one that's overhanging. I'm gonna do a little bit of both, and I'm gonna start in my paper. Whenever I'm doing a skinny strip, I don't want this to happen. Do you see how it kind of crinkled up? So the best way I have found to have that not happen is to start in your paper. And I think the reason it happened is because I went across that seam, and so then it started to push up. But luckily it didn't affect the edge of my piece that I want to keep so we're all good there and we can now add this to the blue piece and this is going just straight on so I'm gonna just take some tear and tape I think is the best option in the past we've gotten some really thin tear and tapes from paper pumpkin kips kits and I always hold on to any of my leftover adhesive so that's what I'm going to use to adhere it to my other blue piece. You could also use a regular size tear and tape or you could li use liquid adhesive, it doesn't really matter. So the size that I'm trying to go for I think is three and three fourths. So I'm gonna kind of come up here on this eight inch and then I have one, two, three, one, two, three, four. and so that is this line right here. So I think I'm trying to get it to be about this wide. So I'm just using my um, grid paper to make sure it goes 
into a rectangle. So our final dimension is three and three fourths by five inches. And then we can add that to our card with some dimensionals, just like this. So try to center that. There'll be a little bigger border for this time. Our die cut, so this is the circle die cut with the trees, and we're gonna pop that on, put some dimensionals on that. And then we're going to do this fun little design. And they kind of have this design in one of their cards, but I wanted it to be a little tighter and not so big. So I'm gonna show you how you can get this shape um, from your coordinating thanks and beyond dies. So let's first stamp our greeting on some basic white cardstock. And I just have a scrap here. Okay. And then you're going to take the hexagon die and you're going to begin by cutting it at the bottom to fit the shape that you want here at the bottom. So I'm going to cut it just like this. There, the, uh, there is will be close to the edge. Okay. So it's going to look like this. Let me just show you really quick close up. So I'm going to run that through my machine and be right back and give you the next step. All right, so now I have a piece like this. And to get the top edge, I'm going to take my um, die and rotate it. And I want the stitching to be on the inside. So I actually have to put it in um, over the greeting. So it's going to look something like this. And that's how you're going to get that shape. Okay, and you can go ahead and just run it straight through. You don't have to worry about um, partial die cutting here because none of this other section is being cut by the die. Okay, so you just bring that down however close you want to the top of the greeting. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. And then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so when you're done, it's going to look something like this. So it's really fun. I love this shape. And I've added a dimensional under the B. And I'm going to just place that near my greeting or near my trees. And then we can add a little bow if we'd like above the greeting. And I've got about, probably about 12 inches here. So you could go a little smaller if you want and you can tie a bow or you can do a faux bow. I'm just going to tie a bow here on um, with that linen thread and then tuck it in and trim it down. Okay, so something like that. Add a little glue dot to the knot. Tuck it in under here. Oh, where did our little tail go? There we go. And this one feels a little long, so I'm going to just trim that slightly. Just like that. And that card is all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me create these two fun cards using some of the products from the May 2024 Paper Pumpkin Kit. If you would like to subscribe to get your own Paper Pumpkin Kit, please do so using the link in the description box below. If you would like to see written instructions or close-up images on how I created these cards, you can visit my blog, creativechelsea.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.